Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. It's been a long time and we miss you and you miss us and we know that. The first person you miss is probably me, your host, Alex Absolutely. Gore. you got a better beard. <laughs> the second person you miss is here, Lance. I don't even know what to call you. You have too many nicknames. We are back, Lance. We are back, Psycho. We'll go with that. Uh, first, <clears throat> if you want to check out, uh, in we're going to talk about the times ahead and there's no time like the present to increase... Basically how your firm is run, and that literally has a domino effect on everything you do, on your life, on your quality of life, how you interact with your spouse, with your children, what the future is like, how you feel when you're at work. Go to buildabetterco.com. Check out our five steps to increasing your profit because the domino effect on that is how your life is really lived. Buildabetterco.com. And I also want you to, right after that, go to RCAT.com because if you can't find the product data you're looking for, you might be using the wrong search engine. Broad searches result in consumer products, out-of-date information, and websites that hide or don't have the information you're looking for. If you need specifications, CAD or BIM, RCAT.com is your search engine. Find and download the up-to-date data you need fast. RCAT.com is free and requires no registration, so try RCAT today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. Back to you, Al Gore. Okay. I'm just going to talk about billions. Um, Ooh, they're down. And this was April. So since we've, it's taken us a while. Yeah. The pace of billions declined at architectural firms slows slightly. Uh, there was a header and maybe. This so this is, one. this is the article is, is published in May, but it's for April. Yep. Basically we've been on a trend about 14 months. Um, of downward. Of, <coughs> right. Right. Uh, Really not hitting above that that fifty. Wow! Right. So it's been about fourteen months. So can you go backwards on the graph, please, and uh, highlight? Just no, no. You're you're perfect. Just tell me about the uh, the dots that are above. What is that? Just one inquiries. month. Inquiries. Oh, this is just inquiries. Those are inquiries. Uh, oh no, no, yeah, yeah. The gray one. That's what I'm talking about. Yep, the gray ones are the actual contracts. Oh wow! So like and, one, two, three, four. Let, we'll we'll give it five. Five out of the last, is this 12 One, months? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Wow. Five out of the last 13 months. Billing has been below what the previous month was. Dang. Yeah. That's not good. Yep. Um, so there's that. Basically, one and by of the, billing, he's saying nationwide. This is from the AIA. Yep. Uh, there is a slight uptick in firms pursuing international projects. Of course. They're probably taking in some from the local. Uh, the most recent one, here we go. Ooh, architectmagazine.com. Actually, okay. so this was, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the one. Architecture industry faces prolonged decline as billing index hit 14 months low. Dang, look at that decline. So th but this one, though, I, I think I had it in reverse order. It was right here, Lance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I get what you're saying. But March. Yeah. March 24 was a bad month, apparently. For architects. Yep. yep. I'm not going to say the number, but I'm going to look up while you're doing that. I want to see where where we were at. Yeah, in March. If, if we yeah, are February, like March. I want to see if we're bucking the trend because that would be neat. Um, I was at a CEO roundtable uh, a couple days ago with a bunch of uh, which a bunch of people that are similar to us in terms of size and location and what they do, architects and builders. Uh, and... What I was saying is, as as far as business was going, it sounded like it was the opposite of kind of what theirs were at. Um, we had a our March was the best billing month of the year. Yay! Hey! Second best, second best, second best. R was, was it April? April? April, was it April was the best. Yep. Yeah. But only by like a very small percentage, like a half a point. Yep. 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 So, uh, 
fill us in round table. What was yeah, the yeah, sentiment? Yeah. Okay, so here, here's what I, here's where I think the trend is, and I just want to I just want to reiterate this to everybody, is that uh, from the beginning we have tried to we tried to set ourselves up uh, way back in 2010 2009 as the formation of of the of the company that we tried to set ourselves up as a volume based architecture mm. business, volume based design business, uh, so we could do. It, Knowing that, like during downtimes, there's probably going to be a, t- a more smaller projects and less bigger ones, and that's a fact for this multifamily at this point. Like, multifamily is kind of kind of dead. Kind of dead. Uh, it's hard to pencil the projects that the developers wanted to do because of the high interest rates plus all of the inflationary uh, forces on construction labor, materials, and all of that. And so, what we're seeing is on our end is a bunch of little projects coming in, a bunch of ADUs. We're doing a ton of TIs. I don't think we've ever done as many tenant improvements ever in the right. history of the firm. Yeah. Like one, one signing one a week. This is what I was saying at the round table. And everybody else, architecture-wise, who was there <clears throat> was not reflecting the same sort of thing I was saying. They were they were not they were in the sense of like they were they were on, we were on the same page of yes, the big projects are dying. Yeah. The big projects are not there. But they weren't going after these smaller projects like we were. Mm. And I think that's indicative of why our billings, it sounds like, are bucking the national trend. So for everybody else listening, I think like if you're trying to if you're trying to do something similar and you're a longtime listener of the of the, of the podcast and maybe you do uh, take what we say seriously and try to implement it in, in your business in whatever kind of way. Proof, proof, is, proof seems to be in the pudding for that. Well, also then, we talked about this a long time ago. When you get a mix of majority more smaller projects and you don't have those bigger meat projects, beware of thrashing. Thrashing, big one. Yeah. Which is Thank you. where the computer, it's a computer term, where there's too many programs open and it can't do anything because all it's doing is checking to make sure all those programs are working. So instead of answering the 15 emails, um, in that one day and that's all you do and then there's 15 more you have to now chunk your smaller projects so that you make progress on them and you give bigger chunks and it's almost like uh less iterations so imagine this instead of uh this is this is theoretical but it'll it'll prove the point a lot of times on a smaller project in the uh schematic phase there is at least two iterations and then there's three iterations in the bigger phase. You should almost do a full schematic design and then just have hopefully a little bit of tweaks. And then in the design development phase, do a whole design development pass and then hopefully have a a, a little bit of tweaks. Now there's some risk with that that you might go too far, right? Um, But then it's not like if you have... 10 projects and you have to have three iterations in each design development. Now you're at 30 versus one and a half. Now you're at 15. So the amount of thrashing went down. Yeah. I'm talking about it on the concept level. You'll have to literally get nitty gritty with each project um, and experience is what's going to uh, dictate your growth there. In computer science, thrashing occurs in a system with virtual memory when a computer's real, real storage resources are overcommitted leading to a constant state of paging and page faults slowing most application level processing this causes the performance of, of the computer to degrade or collapse the situation can continue indefinitely until the user closes some running applications or the active processes free up additional virtual memory resources so yeah i think uh if you're doing a bunch of these you're banging out a ton of smaller projects at and 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 hopefully you're commanding still a a good fee for them the critical the critical part of the whole thing is is just really doing thorough sets of drawings i feel like that are that have been vetted many times and so you're trying to reduce what happened you know yeah once because once you offload them that's what we're trying to do is like we're trying to close the application yeah that's what i'm saying and and the opposite strategy is true when you have a plethora of big projects Mm -hmm. because you don't want to waste too much time going down a, a, the wrong hole on a small project. So you can do a tiny iteration that takes you two hours because you can always go back to the fat project yeah. and keep working on it. And then, and then, and then, oh, all of a sudden they get back to you. You take a two hour break, you work on the tiny project and you're back to the fat project. Yeah. 
Good so. point. That's it. Um, I <coughs> these comedians here have solved uh, the housing crisis. Oh, good. So I want to show you. Good. Um, that people actually understand the issue and are are kind of spot on. Awesome. Okay, next item: housing crisis. How's that going? Not amazing. The population's booming, and we're building fewer homes than at any time in the last decade. What? Oi, do a bit of work. Oh, what? Well, the cost of finance construction is through the roof. Building materials are still way too expensive and don't even get me started on land. Tradies are understandably charging a lot more for their services and labor is very, very hard to find. And big volume builders seem to keep on going out of business. And despite all that, our contracts are mostly fixed. You are such a bummer. What is this gonna mean? Well, home prices are hitting record highs again, despite the fact that no one can afford what they're buying, and the rental market is a complete disaster zone. Build more houses. Unbelievable. Hey, can you push a wheelbarrow? Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's where we're at. Yeah. That's it, where we're at. That is where we're at. It, it's spot on, and uh, we just have to throw the kitchen sink at the whole problem. It is what it is. I hope. I hope one of the reactions to subsidizing student loans in higher education is that more people decide not to do it and more people decide, you know what, I'm going to be a plumber, an electrician, a builder, a contract, whatever, and, and go into the, and just, we, I hope that's the reaction. Like I, I'm really on this uh, bent lately about just being a reactionary in all the different kind of ways. Like how, like think about what, how we, the fundamental things we started this podcast talking about, today was that we're trying to set ourselves up volume based because we started during a downturn and now we're in a downturn again and we've just shown that like hey it seems like it's working and, but we, we're we did that because we were reacting to the situation at yeah. the beginning right and not all not all reactions are good but i like to think it's like i'm sort of like layering on top of my law of polarity thing from last year okay you know in that way yeah like reading like think about the re like how can you be reactionary to the environment in a positive way, whatever environment it is? Yeah, it, it, it's crazy that it, it's basically been proven as much of a fact as can be a fact that when the government subsidizes things, the price goes up. So subsidizing uh, the education market meant that university prices went up. And then now talking about further subsidizing it through student loan relief is only going to make the problem worse. It's, it's crazy that... No one can take the hard pill. And a great point that was asked was like, okay, if you want to give $35,000 to all these university students, like what about Joe, Joe, the plumber, uh, Mary, the, uh, the office executive lady that just maybe even got Mary the accountant. So they yep. all just got like associate, associate, associate degree. degree. Yeah. Rep, and our, you know, and basically the, the answer was, well, the people in the universities are, are being crushed by debt. Yeah. Because you allowed it to happen. Like it, it's like, I don't, it's just crazy logic. It's crazy logic. And, and, and we honestly can't have a rational debate about it, which is uh, unfortunate. And uh, that's why we're talking about it because it is, we can have a rational debate about it. It is okay to say that a little bit of pain now is all right for the long term because we can't keep subsidizing yeah. what's not working. Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, okay, cool. Well, uh, I've got, uh, I've got Tyler versus Rachel today. Okay. Uh, so I've been wanting, I want to talk about this for a month. We haven't podcast for like three weeks. I'm, I'm sorry. We're just very busy doing personal stuff, but Hey, we'll be back every week. It's all good. Maybe we can do a bonus episode. Uh, so, uh, good friend, Tyler to Suomala on LinkedIn. Uh, pronouns architect growth hack at growth hacks hang this message on your wall read it out loud every single day recite it at, as every team every week blast it through your loudspeakers do whatever you have to do to stop racing to the bottom architects lower fees only attract lower quality qui clients stop racing to the bottom and that the one thing i wanted to say about this before i show rachel had a reply to this that completely disagreed with tyler and i want al's take on it okay but my my quick yeah, take on the my quick take on the te on the meme is that uh, we just again kind of yeah, there's a lot of providence today in the podcast and that is like we're talking about the bottom right in the sense of like what is the bottom of of the market right now it seems like it's a bunch of little projects right 
But the key to it is like Tyler's right. You can't lower your your fees with mm-hmm. it. You need to keep the fees you need to keep to command twenty to thirty percent profit. That's where you should be at as an art with an architecture service base firm or a construction firm, and 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 then then your volume based system works. Very very critical, right? Well, Rachel didn't like what Tyler had to say whatsoever. So oh, Rachel wow. says, Rachel Bernstone, she, her. This message is probably true if you're only interested in client as patron architecture. Oh, interesting point. I love it right off exactly. of the bat. Exactly. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Hey, Rachel hitting hard. Everybody, I like yep, it. Rachel jabbing, little jab there. Yeah. But if you're interested in client as customer architecture and want to create impact at a scale and make good design more accessible to more people, well then, lower fees will attract exactly the types of clients you need to appeal to. The way I see it, if architects want to grow the pie beyond the 3 to 5% of residential clients who currently use an architect in Australia, or the 6% of residential clients in the UK, then packaging up services in a way that appeals to a broader range of clients is vital. Does anyone know how many homes in the USA are currently designed by architects? Drop a comment if you have the data. So I think the question is not what type of architecture do you want to do, but what type of architect do you want to be Al? So I have designed houses for track builders. My prices were almost the same as a custom house. Uh, the thing was, mm. I just know it's going to be used a, a, a whole bunch. Um, so the, it's hard too, because you can the level of care and customization you really can't do because you're not designing for one client. Mm-hmm. So that's true. It doesn't mean that you can't make these things more efficient, two foot increments, uh, add some detail and nuance to the design. So my reaction, which isn't going to be a, a nice kind of soundbite like Lance's, whatever market you're going at, the structure of your firm has to fit that. Yeah. So let's say you want to go down the pipeline and lower your fees to service these people. How are you doing it? Going yeah. back to our thrashing. Two things can be true chunking. at once, right? You, you exactly. could, you, you could do Tyler's strategy or you could do Rachel's. So I think it's a good contrast and that's the point. Yes. You're, you're pull, yep. I'm pulling out the point exactly. I wanted from Al Gore. Today. Yep. It is make sure you realize that you aren't <clears throat> at the lower fee thing doing what um, you aren't doing patron architecture. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that like, you don't care about it, but you can't do custom details because custom details cost custom money. It just does. Yeah. It costs custom time. Yeah. And I agree with Rachel cool, that coolness, that coolness costs coolness, cool money. Like I, I swear to God, everything oh, that looks cool yeah. is expensively cool. I don't know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I, we we built enough to know that lessons the hard way. Yep. Um, so I do agree with Rachel that, that, more people deserve architecture time and talent, but don't yeah. do it at the expense of yourself, your livelihood, your kids, your family, your firm, their life, all that other stuff. And if we really believe that diversity is our strength, then you should then if like if that's what you believe, right? And and whatever in whatever lane you believe that within, my lane is oh diversity is our strength. We're gonna set ourselves up for Rachel's point and Tyler's point. And then, and then hopefully we keep billing in, in the way we do and, and crush it. And hopefully, hopefully everybody else is listening is trying to take that yep. approach too. Because Rachel's point, make sure in your contract, you have clear guidelines and iterations and start and stop points. Make sure that's, it's that's, super think, clear. Yep. Structure, structure, structure. Yep. Yep. When you're with Tyler, like, yes, you, you, are, you are making good to great architecture. And that's going to take more time and nuance. And some people will... I don't think people, people might say this like, oh no, you can make amazing architecture, you know, on Rachel's side. Yes, you can, but it's not going to be, not everyone can or should be that. It's just the nature of the, like, let's live in reality. Let's live in reality here. Yeah. Okay. Last and certainly not least again, sorry, this is a month late, but it doesn't matter. It's within a month. Uh, NAHB, na- new nationwide codes mandate a major blow to housing affordably. <laughs> We're just like, it doesn't stop, bro. Whatever. It two, is what okay, it is. Hey, hey, hey. Two things can't be true at once. You can't raise the price there of stuff go. and then also be affordable. Situations are no. situational. In this situation, two things cannot be true I at know, once. I was explaining. I was, Reality. I was explaining to a client yesterday. 
about uh, it's a design build project, and he, he was just shocked at the price. And I go, "Hey, I'm with you. Like, I trust me. I, I really tried to empathize with him. I, I explained the the uh, about the development that me and Alan literally sitting in right now, and like, gosh, it was just more expensive than we wanted it to be, and it, it always is, right? I explained how. Uh, when I designed and built my first custom house with my wife, that it was very expensive. It was, and I, Al, I even told Al the sticker price yesterday. And he goes, I don't even, I don't even remember that. And I had to tell him about all the, all the, all the things we had to do to save costs, different kind of finishes, and all that stuff. And then I explained that I go, hey, do you, do you? Un-, this is me to the client. Do you understand that? Do you, I don't even know if you know this, but do you know that every three years they update the codes? Every three years, and I go with the insulation in particular. They went from R thirty in the ceilings to R49 and then they went to R60 and I go it and then and on top of that and I go now now they're making it for the walls and I said I just said the same thing I go we, we were at one point we were at R15 yes we were at one point we were R15 then we went to R then we went to R20 90. then we went to R21 then we went to R30 uh, or 20 R20 plus 5 where you have to do so it's just like oh my gosh yeah like a, and I've been saying this for a while it's like Boy, I mean, maybe we just keep going. I, I, hey, I was wrong about the Fed. They threaded the needle almost perfectly, pretty much. They they are holding steady with their rates. I think they're actually making the right decisions for us all just going, nope, we're living in a fiat currency system. It is what it is. So maybe they can do the same thing with the codes and the insulation. Maybe we'll be at R7000 one day, and I'll just shut up. <laughs> so <laughs> Exactly. Um, maybe, I thought, the, screw it. And... and I, I would say right now, if if it, the economy f's up, it's actually not because of the Fed. I'm I'm thinking about this in real time. It's because the government can't stop spending and then misallocating resources and thus effing up the system. Um, and the Fed is just trying to negate. I that. think the Fed did it. I just can't believe how good of a job they did. Seriously, they threaded the needle. Yeah. Okay. That extra trillion dollar uh, inflation reduction bill wasn't. Did not help inflation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here, here's the article. <laughs> Carl Harris, chairman of the National Association of Home Builders and a custom home builder from Wichita, Kansas, today issued the following statement after a Biden administration announced that the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and U.S. Department of Agriculture will insure mortgages for new homes only if they are built to the 2021 International Energy Conservation Code, R60, all the craziness we just talked about. Without adequate review and consideration of how it will affect home buyers or renters, HUD and USDA have rammed through a rule that will do little to curb overall energy use in the U.S., but will exacerbate the housing. I agree. And and frankly, here's the thing. Uh, remember, like you go look at the who's the biggest emitters right now on the planet. It's India and China, right? We're just shooting ourselves in the foot. Like it, it, Our CO2 emission per capita has consistently went down since the 90s, and it's and it's mainly because of the of the proliferation of um, natural, natural gas. gas. Yes. Yep. Well, and, buddy and, Romers, buddy Romers, and that we moved manufacturing off. Correct. But but per capita, we are less than the 80s. So like, uh, we we're trending in the right direction. Americans are actually they're driving even smaller cars. I mean, it's a, it's a fact. Yeah. More hybrids on the road than ever. It's more uh, all the electric stuff. Anyway, let's go thorium nuclear reactors too. Come on. Everyone get on board. Let's go. Studies have shown that uh, building to the 2021 IECC can add up to 20 to $31,000. Fact. To fact. The price fact. Of the new We've experienced it. Fact. And fact. take uh, and take up to 90 years for a home buyer to realize payback. Oh, my gosh. See, that's kind of the crazy part. Take up to 90 fact. years for a home buyer to realize the payback on the added cost of a home. This unreasonable trade-off for a new home buyer would do little to offer minimal, meaningful energy savings for residential homes and apartments. Quote, the Biden administration has a set goal of building an additional 2 million homes, and this new rule runs completely counter to that objective. HUD and USDA are meant to help the most vulnerable home buyers and renters not price them out of housing market. This census nationwide code mandate will significantly raise housing costs, particularly in the price-sensitive entry-level market starter for homes and affordable renter properties, and limit access to mortgage finding while providing little benefit to new home buyers and renters. And you couple that with the NAR re- ruling that just came out, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I need you to go back and listen to the most recent episode I did with uh, uh, with Marilyn. Uh, she, the most recent one she was on, she breaks down the NAR ruling 
brilliantly. I just had a, a different guy on from Dallas. His name is Sonny Moyers. He'll become that episode will be coming on the Monday morning show soon. I picked his brain about it. Um, I'm I'm doing an interview with another realtor, a local one, in a couple of weeks. We're gonna, I'm going to pick her brain about it, and we all kind of agree. We don't know if if it's for sure going to hurt the buyers, but it sounds like it probably will at some level where they are now having to come out of home buyers will have to come up with more money out of pocket to pay for an actual buyer's agent to represent them, which is which is completely nuts. Anyway, that's what I got. I don't know what else you can do besides you just got to say stoic. You just got to say stoic. Um, and call a spade spades. Call it's a okay. spade a spade. And don't don't try to su- support. I, I think you like – we like – I like NAHB. That's why I yes. highlight them the most versus the AIA, which apparently is Colorado anyway. I was uh, corrected to this in that uh, meeting that uh, the Colorado AIA is actually trying to push – through some legislature to to help with a, a housing crisis here in two different ways, they're actually trying oh, to help with yes. the with the condo laws um, to make it so you have a right to repair. <laughs> you actually have a right to repair. Yep. You get one. You get one chance to fix the problems that supposedly happen. That they have to happen too. That's the other thing they're gonna they're gonna couple it with oh, that. Like oh, amazing, yeah, amazing. So they're gonna do th- they're gonna do that. Um, yeah, yeah. That was that was the biggest thing. And then and then the other one was that they're. Uh, trying to make sure that the ADU laws go into effect um, w- without an overburdened process, yeah. like a yeah. city yeah. that we're in might be doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's call a spade to spade. Kudos; those are super helpful. Yeah, those. exactly. Go AIA. Keep doing your thing. If you do one more thing, if you, if we, if you said, "Hey, Lance, we want you to be the, uh, we want you to, we're going to appoint you to a new board, and it's going to be public outreach." And that you're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna be in charge of figuring out how we're gonna tell the pu- general public what architects actually actually do, and then uh, uh, man maybe. Do you, I would but join. do you know the first step to that? What visa be easy? Be, uh, first, I'm gonna hire Tyler. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so. literally hire literally hire hire Tyler Suomala. Oh my God, that would uh, honestly <laughs> be brilliant. Yeah. Gosh, there was another one. I okay. Since we're on that, well, we'll save it for next episode because he's got a great another post I saw this morning. I thought was just awesome. Oh, it yeah. was like fifty ways how architects save you money, and they were spot on. Okay, the reason there's there's only one reason not to hire Tyler. Yeah. Okay. It's because why you hire those big brands is because they uh, of marketing agencies is because they have more experience in the guardrails too. Not only do they have talent, not only do they know how to make stuff, not only do they have system, right? But they have guardrails where they're not going to say something crazy, right? Oh, sure. I don't think Tyler is, right? Because yeah. I just I've seen enough of his yeah. stuff. But the bang for your buck of hiring Tyler will go so much farther. He, they're going to be more viral. They're going to be more shareable. They're going to be more to the point. They're going to be more spot on. You know what else he's doing? Somebody like Tyler's doing that, what? like the AI just frankly can't because they're just too big for themselves what tyler's touching the grass oh yes you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah. tyler's tyler's still out there touching the grass that's super important yeah yeah all right uh that's all we got for you if you like this episode you're watching on youtube leave us a positive comment like subscribe jason altman you're the mvp of youtube keep commenting we love you so much and if you're listening on itunes leave us a five-star review see you next week bye